You're going to want to grab yourself some heavier weight fabric. I recommend duck canvas or a heavier weight twill. And I recommend grabbing about a yard just to be safe. You're going to want to grab some thin material for your lining. And you can pretty much use any material that's super thin and also grab a yard. You're going to want to grab some 2 inch webbing. You can go 1 inch if you want, but I personally like the 2 inch. Then to go along with that 2 inch webbing, you'll need 2 inch buckles and you'll need 4 of these. Then you'll need a mesh material for the back panel and we're using a safety vest. We couldn't find the right orange so we decided to use a vest. You'll want to grab two zippers. I recommend getting a 24 inch and a 22 inch. You will be cutting the ends off so you can totally grab bigger zippers if you want to. And this pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super easy to use and you can print it right off your computer. With all the supplies told together, you can make a couple of these bags for less than 20 bucks and all the links will be in the description below. All right, getting started, you're going to want to go ahead and trace your pattern onto your outer fabric. Cut it out and you're going to want one of each panel and two of the top zipper panels. And then go ahead and cut out the same amount of panels for your lining. In your back panel, you're going to want that out of a mesh material and we're using a safety vest. Grab your 22 inch zipper and your front top panels, the inside and the outside. And what you're going to want to do is place the right side on one edge of the zipper and you're going to want to pin it and sew it on. Go ahead and do a straight stitch all the way through. Next, grab your bottom front panel and place it on the opposite side as the top panel. And what you're going to, want to do is the same thing. And I recommend pinning these because it's way easier to sew. And make sure the top and bottom panels line up. And go ahead and do a straight stitch all the way through. Next, we're going to add a top stitch along that bottom panel and just on the bottom panel. So go ahead and fold it open and stitch all the way across. So as you can see, the back and front panels don't match up. So what we're going to do is fold that top over to match the back. And we have the back laying there as a reference. So go ahead and fold it and pin it over. And that's going to create a flat for that zipper. And what we're going to do is stitch right on that zipper all the way across so we get a nice straight stitch. And this will keep that flap in position. And as you can see, the top lining falls way too far past, so go ahead and take your scissors and snip that off. And before we sew the side flaps down, go ahead and move that zipper train towards the center of the panel. And just do a straight stitch across those zippers, sewing those flaps down as close as you can to that side edge. And now we're going to add the webbing onto the front. And what you're going to want to do is fold that back lining up. So that way you're just working with the bottom of the front panel. And we are using one inch webbing for this. You can totally use whatever size you want. Go ahead, line them up, pin them down. And what we're going to do is sew them in increments vertically. And we space them out in about three and a quarter inches. So go ahead and do it how you want. If you have a certain purpose for these ones, you can do it how whatever size you want. But we did three and a quarter inches. And then go ahead and do those vertical stitches for all those marks. Go ahead and grab the lining you cut out for the back panel and we're actually going to use this for the front panel to seal off that front pocket. And what you're going to do is lay it on and sew all the way around that edge. And we're going to use a zigzag stitch and get as close as you can to the edge. And if you use a zigzag stitch, you can actually go right on that edge. Next, grab your scissors and go ahead and trim off that zipper that's poking out. Next, we're going to be working on the top zipper panel. So go ahead and grab one side of your top zipper panel, both the outside and the lining, and place them just like you did the front panel. On one side, pin it down, and go ahead and sew all the way across.
And now we're gonna add a top stitch just like we did on the front panel. So go ahead and fold it out and stitch all the way across on the top. Then go ahead and grab your other side panel, place it on the opposite side and do the exact same thing. Once you have the zipper portion complete, go ahead and grab your bottom side panel, place the right sides together and go ahead and pin it down. Once you have it lined up and into position, go ahead and stitch across. And just like before, go ahead and move that zipper train towards the middle, go ahead and line up right sides together, pin it down. And once you have it lined up and pinned down, go ahead and sew across. Grab your scissors and trim off those zipper ends. We're going to add a top stitch, so go ahead and fold that inside seam towards the bottom and stitch across. And go ahead and do this for both sides. Next, we're going to attach in the buckles to the back, so go ahead and cut out four 7-inch strips of webbing and feed them through. And these buckles are going to be positioned vertically in the top two corners as close as you can to the edge about an inch out and horizontally on the bottom two corners about the inch out from the bottom. Then go ahead and do a straight stitch across those as close as you can to the edge because this is just holding them down so when you sew that back panel on it keeps them into position. Next, grab your finished side panel, go ahead and mark the middles. You're gonna to wanna to do it for both top and bottom and then grab your front panel and do the same thing. Mark the centers and what you're gonna do is line those up and pin them down. And the biggest thing here is just to make sure that whole side panel is even on the front panel so that way the zipper is not all offset when you come to unfold it in the end. You definitely wanna make sure it's nice and centered. And once you have it aligned and all pinned down, go ahead and sew all the way around that outside edge. And this definitely is the trickiest part of the whole project. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you take your time, go slow around those edges and just work with the fabric. And you may have to do it a couple times to really perfect this part, but once you do it a few times, it becomes super easy and you can make these bags like nothing. And then I'd recommend flipping it out and just check around the whole edge to make sure you got every single piece in there. Sometimes you can skip a part, but definitely flip it out, check it over, and then you're ready for the next step. Go ahead and grab your back panel and the same rules apply. Mark the centers and then pin it down. Once you have it all centered up, you're ready to sew and it's the same as the other side. Go ahead and sew all the way around that outside edge and just take your time. Go ahead and flip it inside out and we're gonna clean up all those edges and make them uniform with each other because we're gonna be adding bias tape all the way around. So we're gonna be using a double fold bias tape binder to clean up those edges. And you can definitely get these for domestic sewing machines too. We're gonna have links in the description. So go ahead and cut out long pieces of bias tape that are the right measurements to the width of your binder. The other option is to use a bias tape making kit and this is where you pretty much just make your own bias tape and it comes with a presser foot that helps you attach the bias tape to your garment. And it's pretty simple to use. All you have to do is cut a strip, feed it through, and iron it. And after that, it works the same as the bias tape. You just fold it over and sew it on or you use that attachment. 
and it is super simple just make sure you go around both those edges and that's why we have that seam allowance there so that way we have an edge to work with to attach this bias tape and we are using an industrial binder but you can get the same ones for domestic sewing machines and we'll have links for both of them in the description and there you have it your inside edges are nice and clean and it's going to prevent it from fraying go ahead and pull the right side out and pop out all those corners Next, go ahead and grab your back mesh panel, and what you're going to do is the same thing, just do a bias tape all the way around the outside edge. Then go ahead and cut four strips of webbing. I recommend going about a half a yard for each. It's totally up to you and preference because it's gonna be the sizing of it. I go a little bit over so that way I totally have enough and then trim down after. And what you're gonna do is line two up vertically and then two at the bottom on 45 degree angles. And then you're gonna to wanna to stitch those on. And these are gonna be the top ones that are vertical. And just do a box stitch around the outside edges of that webbing. And then go ahead and do the same ones for the bottom two, but make sure these ones are on 45 degree angles. Go ahead and grab your pack and place it over the back panel. You're going to want to grab your adjustment ring and feed it through. From there, you're going to want to go ahead and feed it through your buckle and then back up through that adjustment ring. And then go ahead and repeat this process for the other three buckles. And to make sure the webbing doesn't slide out, go ahead and fold the end over that you fed through the adjustment ring and sew it down. And then also repeat this step for the other three straps. And as you can see, our straps have been cut down and this is why I recommend using more at the start because you can always go back. And there you have it, your chest bag is complete. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think. If you have any ideas for us, definitely send them our way. We'll try to make it happen for you. But until then, we're gonna keep the videos coming at you. So we'll see you next time.